And on this Veterans Day, we talk about one Indiana native whose words touch the world. Sherry McBroom has the story of World War II correspondent Ernie Pyle. There was a point in Ernie Pyle's life in which he wrote aviation columns six times a week for four years. Some of his stories are on display at the Ernie Pyle World War II Museum, constructed in memory of him in his hometown of Dana, Indiana. While writing, he had the opportunity to work with some of the great aviators in U.S. history, such as General Jimmy Doolittle and Amelia Earhart. Earhart is famously quoted as saying, any aviator who didn't know Pyle was a nobody. I used to tell my students that I saw Ernie Pyle as somebody who had a video camera in his head. And so he soaked up information and that made it easier to draw people into the story. When Pyle arrived on the campus of Indiana University in 1919, he majored in economics and studied journalism. He would use what he learned at IU to write stories about some of the most historic events during World War II. In the middle of 1942, he joined uh, U.S. forces um, training for battle in um, Europe, and he went th with the forces through North Africa, up through Italy, uh, the D-Day invasion, and on to the liberation of Paris. According to Johnson, soldiers would inform their families that if they wanted to understand what was happening in the war, read Ernie Pyle. Stories written by Pyle were so well received because his stories were not about the glitz and glamour, but about the true stories of World War II. He was a contact reference for people back home across the United States. Everybody read Ernie Pyle during the 30, from the, the Depression through the war because they were wanting to see how the rest of the world was through his eyes, common eyes, you know, where, where he was traveling and getting to do things that most people would never get to do. Clarabelle Mishler, believed to be the oldest living person in Dana, Indiana, was able to meet Pyle as their families lived across the field from one another. When he would come home from the war, she was able to see photographs of his experiences across the world. We'd talk to him, you know, but he'd come back once in a while, him and his dad would come and he'd show pictures of him up, day, up a town on the, on the streets and talking to people, but he was the... Uh, he was a good guy. His detailed writings would eventually earn him a Pulitzer Prize in 1944. And though he died in combat in 1945, just five months before World War II would conclude, he continues to remain part of the culture of not only Dana and Indiana University, but the entire state of Indiana. And he was so popular, Hess says by the time the war ended, Pyle was carried in more than 800 newspapers worldwide.